morning and welcome to Construction Math. Today we're going to be using the Pythagorean Theorem to solve right triangles and use them in for some construction applications. So for bell work, look around your classroom and find as many right triangles as you can. Jot them down on your note taker, share with your partner the ones that you found, and teacher call on non-volunteers when they've had enough time, and I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. Welcome back. I'm sure you found quite a few right triangles in your classroom. All right. Some right triangles, remember they have to have one right angle. A right triangle has to have two acute angles. And remember an acute angle is an angle that is greater than zero but less than 90. They have two legs or sides and the longest side is the hypotenuse. All right. So those are some terms you need to remember from either junior high or from your geometry class. So math check. I need you to work these four problems. You certainly may use a calculator or your phone if it has a calculator. And I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. Welcome back. Let's go to our slate and let's look at these problems and talk about them. Number one, the problem says to take five squared. All right. What that means in math is you take five times five. The exponent tells you how many times to multiply that base number together and you get 25. Not a very difficult problem. Number two, we get, we want 7 squared plus 9 squared. And that's re reminding you about order of operation, that exponents are more important than addition, so we're going to square them first. 7 squared means 7 times 7, which is 49. 9 squared means 9 times 9, which is 81. And when we add them together, we get 130. Number three says the square root of 49. What I'm looking for is what number times itself equals to 49, or in the calculator you push 49 and hit the square root button and you get 7, because 7 times 7 is 49. 14, it, or number 4, is the square root of 169. I happen to know that 13 times 13 is 169, because I know my 13's times tables, so the answer is this. And I don't really care if you did it on your calculator or did it by hand, but just so long as you understand what we were doing. And these are the two skills you're going to need to be able to do today. All right. So pause the video, teachers, if the kids need more time. And well, I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. Let's go back to our PowerPoint and look at our objectives for today. Oh, there's the answers. We checked. We got them right. All right. So fill in on your note taker the things that are in red. Number one, we're going to learn how to label a right triangle with some math vocabulary. Number two, we're going to explain what the Pythagorean Theorem is all about. And three, to utilize the Pythagorean Theorem to solve some problems. So we have three things that we're going to look forward to being able to do today. All right, so first of all, here's some reminders for you from geometry class. Angles are always labeled with capital letters. All right, so we know our angles in this triangle happen to be angle A, angle B, and angle C. Sides are labeled with lowercase letters, and across, they're always across from the angle. The angle drives everything. So across from angle C, and this particular right triangle is the hypotenuse, and it would be lowercase c. So we need how to do that. And C is usually the right angle. You'll find some problems that are in textbooks or even in my problems that might not be, but it's usually the default that the right angle is C. So fill in the, the missing words on your note taker. Teacher, pause if you need a second or two to look at this for the students. I'll meet you back here. Welcome back. Let's go on to our next slide. And this is a U try. Here's a picture of a triangle. I want you to be able to label which where, where the hypotenuse is, which of the parts of the triangle are sides, and where the right angle is. So teacher, pause the video and have the students do that for us, please. Welcome back. Here's the answers. The right angle is the 90 degree angle. It is usually identified by having that extra, like making a little rectangle there or a box. The hypotenuse is always across from the right triangle. It's always the longest side. And then the other two are just called sides. Sometimes in geometry they also call them legs of the triangle. All right. So after you've checked, we'll move on. All right. Now here's the Pythagorean theorem. 
A and B are the sides of the triangle, and C is the hypotenuse. And so the formula is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I've had a lot of students at my time that could recite that to me, but not really know what it meant. So let's make sure that we all know what this means. All right, make sure you filled in those two terms, that A and B are of the sides. They're squared and added together, and then the hypotenuse is by itself on one of the sides. So let's look. Here's what the Pythagorean theorem actually means. That if you were to take each side of a right triangle and draw a real square on it, not the mathematical um, operation of squaring a number, but you actually drew the squares. Like on the side that was 4, I would have a square that has an area of 16. On the side that was 3, the B side, I would have a tri uh, square that had area of 9. And the right triangle side on the hypotenuse is 5. It has a, an area of 25. So if you counted all the blocks, A has 16, B has 9, you can actually cut in, put those other two squares into the big square. That's where it came from. Now, squares are not the only shape. I could make triangles off of them. I could make hexagons off of them. And the areas would all of A and B would always equal to the area of C. So that's what it means. It's talking about area. All right, so on your, on your note taker, teacher, take one minute and have the students write down an explanation of what they know about the Pythagorean theorem. Pause the video, let them share with their partner, and then call on non-volunteers. And I'll meet you back here in a couple minutes. Welcome back. Now here's my first example. So on your note taker, please fill in that A is going to be 12 feet long and B is 16 feet long. I can guarantee you in these slides that A and B and C may not always be to scale. So in this case, although my uh, side A looks longer, it's only 12 feet. And so we just go with that, okay? And we want to find the hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and go to my slate. And we're going to look at this, all right? So here I'm going to draw a little right triangle, not as well as I can with the computer. Oops, and then here's my side. This is the hypotenuse. Oops, hypotenuse. That's all we see. And these don't matter whether they're A or B. So what do I know here? I know that A is 12 feet. I know that B is 16 feet. So I'm going to work it out with every step. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In a construction class, you'll know this, and Mr. Luckow or whoever your construction teacher is will talk about the 3, 4, 5. But here I'm going to substitute in for a. a is 12 feet. I'm going to take the labels, too, and, and show you how these come out. b is 16 feet, and I'm going to square that, and it's going to equal to c squared. All right, so I'm going to square 12. 12 times 12 is 144. When I square feet, it means feet times feet, so I get feet squared. All right, 16 squared is 256. Feet squared, again, is feet squared, and that's going to equal to C squared. When I add them, I can add them together because they're the same units. 144 and 256 equal to 400 square feet equals c squared. Now to get c all by itself, the um, inverse of squaring is square rooting, so I'm going to square root both sides. So what I have to do is I can either take the square root of 400 on my calculator, or I can just know that it's 20. 20 times 20 is 400. Feet squared, when I take the square root, it just gives me feet. When I take the square root of c squared, square rooting and squaring cancel out, and there's my answer. Now, on your paper or on your test, if you don't put the labels in, that's fine. Until you get to this last step, if it has a label on it, I'll expect a label on the answer. All right, so pause the video, teacher, until students have had a chance to complete this problem in their notes. Welcome back. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. Look, I got the right answer. Yay. So number two, will you fill in the 17 feet and the 30 feet. All right. And I, what I'd like you to do is right now, just the first step on your note taker is set the problem up. You don't need to work it, just set it up. Teacher, pause the video until students have had a chance to do that. Welcome back. Let's go to our slate. 
All right, first thing you want to always remember to do is write down the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now I'm going to substitute in. I know that a is 17 feet. And again, if you don't put the feet on, I'll be okay as long as you put it in the answer. b is 30 feet. And that equals to c squared. So with your calculator or do it by hand, square 17 and square 30. Pause the video until students have done that. Welcome back. 17 times 17 is 289. Feet squared is feet squared. 30 times 30 is 900. When I square feet, I get feet squared. Now I'm going to do the math. When I add them together, I get 1,189 feet squared is equal to c squared. I don't know that one in my head, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides. I don't think this comes out even, so in your calculator, take the square root of 1,189, and I came out with 34.48 feet squared. When I take its square root, I just get feet. When I take the square root of c squared, I just get c. So there's my answer. Always take it to at least one decimal point. I took it to two. On the test, I will tell you how far to take it. So pause the video if you need to, and I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. And let's do, oh, there's my answer. There's a U try. So will you work this one on your note taker? You need to fill in that A is 6 feet, B is 14 feet. Teacher, pause the video until students have completed an answer. Please remember to label the answer. And then please then call on non-volunteers. And I'll meet you back here in a couple minutes. Welcome back. Let's see if you got the right answer. I got 6 feet for A. I got 14 feet for B. 6 squared was 36 feet squared. 14 squared is 196. I added 36 plus 196 and got 232. Took the square root of both sides. I took it to two decimal places. I got 15.23 feet. And I remembered to label my answer so I feel like I'm really doing a good job. All right. So let's go on. Example 3. Example 3 said, fill in your note taker that A is going to be 28 feet, C is 42 feet, and I want to find B. So after you put in those two values, I'm going to have a question for you. My question is, what, what's different in this problem? How is it different than any of the other questions? So teacher, pause the video and have the students discuss, and I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. I hope you heard the answer of this time we're solving for one of the sides instead of the hypotenuse. This time we have C instead of looking for C. So let's look at an example. All right, here's my example all worked out. But let's go ahead and go to the, uh, to the slate and we'll come back and check. All right, so I'm going to put it down. First of all, I'm going to step you through this A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm going to look at my notes on a is going to be 28 feet, square it. B squared is what I'm looking for, and C is 42 feet. And I'm going to square it. I'm still going to do the math. 28 squared is 784 feet squared. B squared is still the variable. 42 squared is 1,764 feet squared. I want to get the B all by itself, so I'm going to subtract 784 square feet from both sides. So I get B squared equals 980 square feet. Take the square root of both sides, and I get B equals, and this time I just rounded it to one decimal point. So let's see. Copy the steps down, and then let's go back in just a minute and check. Welcome back. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. And there's my answer. I got the same thing, but this time I got to step you through the answers. All right. So it just we use the same formula. And let's go ahead and go on. You try this problem. This time we're looking for A, and we have B and C. So teacher, pause the video, have the students work the problem, share with their partner and compare, call on non-volunteers, and I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. Let's see how I did. I substituted, I was looking for A, B is 30 feet, C is 60 feet, 
So 30 squared is 900 feet squared is feet squared, and 60 squared is 3,600 feet squared. I subtracted 900 feet squared from both sides to get the A squared by itself. 3,600 minus 900 is 2,700. I took the square root of both sides. This time I rounded it to two decimal places and came out with 51.96 feet. How'd you do? Pretty well, I hope. All right, let's move on to the next problem. Pause it if you need to, teacher, at any time. So here, now we're going to a construction example. It's 14 feet in the horizontal direction of the, the roof and 6 feet 10 inches in the vertical direction. All right, so add those to your note taker. And then we're going on to this question. My question is, what's different in this problem? than anything we've done before. So teacher, pause the video and meet me back here in just a couple minutes. Welcome back. Some of the things that are different is now this is an application problem. It really deals with the, the pitch of a roof and the horizontal and vertical distances. It also has feet and inches instead of just feet. So we're gonna have to deal with that. So here we go. Here's, we're gonna change, step one, we're gonna change all the measurements to inches. So take a, a second and change 14 feet to inches and take 6 feet 10 inches and change those to inches. Teacher, pause the video, have the students share, and then call on non-volunteers and I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. Let's go to our slates and see what we can do. All right, this is unit conversion. That was our very first unit we did in math this year. So I want to take 14 feet and I want to change it into inches. So I'm going to find a conversion factor. First of all, I'm going to make this a fraction. And the conversion factor is there's 16, or no, there's 12 inches in one foot. So I'm going to put the one foot on the bottom so that they cancel out, put the 12 inches on the top. So 12 times 14 happens to be 168 inches. That one was pretty straightforward. The next one, though, said 6 feet 10 inches. All right, I've got this part in inches, but what I need to do first is the 6 feet to inches. So I'm going to do the same thing. 6 feet over 1 times 12 inches in 1 foot. The feet cancel out. 6 times 12 is 72 inches. But remember, we also had the 10 inches, so I have to add the 10 inches. That gives me a total of 82 inches. So on my triangle right now, it looks like this. All right, This one happens to be 82 inches. This one happens to be 168 inches. And this one is C or X, whatever you'd like to call it. All right, so now we've got the values into all the same units. So pause the video if you need a second or two, and I'll meet you back here. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and go back to the PowerPoint. Let's check that I did it correctly. I certainly did. I got the same answers, and that makes me very happy. So now I'm going to go to my slate, and I'm going to work this out. And I'm going to do the Pythagorean theorem, remembering this time that everything is in inches. I'm looking for the hypotenuse. So one of my sides was 82 inches and I'm going to square that. The other side was 168 inches. I'm going to square that, and that's going to equal to C squared. So let me do the math real quickly. 82 squared is 6,724 inches squared, plus, and this is 28,224 inches squared equals to C squared. So double check my math, and then now I'm going to add them together, and I get 100. 34,948 square inches is C squared. Now square root both sides. The Ben Coulomb needs to be long enough. I get that it's 180, oops, 186.94 inches. All right. Now what we can do now is take that and change it back to feet if we needed to. All right. You take this answer times 12 inches in one foot. And let me do that real carefully, quickly for you. And I'm going to get 186.94 divided by 12. And I get the answer of 15.58 feet. 
Now, if you want it in feet and inches, you take the point 0.78 feet times one foot is 12 inches. And then we get point 0.78 times 12, and we would get nine point, this would turn out to be 9.36 inches. So the final answer would be 15 feet, 9.36 inches, depending on the accuracy that you need. All right. Pause the video, teacher, if students need time to copy these down or ask questions. And I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. And we have a little more confusing. Oh, there we go. Got the same thing. There's the power line. So here's a question. A 15-mile power line can be straightened out without a new run right-of-way. How long will the new power line be? So the power line right now is 15 miles because we start out at the left-hand side, go up 10, and down 5 miles. So that's the 15 feet. Now they're going to wait one that goes straight, and they want to know how much, how long will the new power line be, and maybe even how long that we're going, how much we're going to save. So let's go ahead and go on to the next one, next slide, and let's solve it. The first thing I want you to do is break this down into two separate triangles, the left-hand triangle and the right-hand triangle on your paper, and label them left and right. Teacher, pause the video until students have sketched it out. Be sure that you can just label the, the missing sides, either A, B, C, or X. All right, welcome back. So let's look at the left-hand side. The left-hand side, I got 10 miles in the slanted direction, or the diagonal direction, in the vertical direction was four miles, and I just called my base B. Now, what I need you to do is, with your partner, solve it for B. All right, solve it for two decimal places, and I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back, let's check. All right, I solved it for B. I put one of the sides was four miles. Remember the 10 miles is actually the hypotenuse, so I put it in for C. Four squared is 16 miles squared. 10 squared is 100. I subtracted 16 miles squared or square miles from both sides, and I got B squared equals 84. Took the square root, and it's about 9.17 miles. All right, so double check and make sure you got the same answer that I did. And then let's go on. Next thing we're going to do is, here is my right triangle. Take a moment or two and solve that one for B, or whatever you called it. Welcome back. Let's look. So I have 4 miles and 5 miles this time. 4 miles is one of the sides. I chose it to be A. You could have chosen it to be B. C was 5 miles, though. And so I came out with 13 miles. All right. So now. Here's the question, if it, when you're ready to move on. How many miles shorter is the new route than the old one? So you're going to have to, first of all, find out how long the new route is and then find the difference. And I'll meet you back here in a couple minutes. Welcome back. All right. The new power line would be 9.17 miles plus 3 miles, so it's 12.17 miles long. So how much shorter is it? I subtracted. Remember, if you're doing this by hand to make it 15.00 and subtract the 12.17 and get 2.83 miles shorter. So there's lots of applications for um, the Pythagorean theorem or the 345 in construction. One of the, the most usable things from math that you'll use. All right. Now closure. One minute to write down the key points of today's lesson. Share with your partner and teach a call on non-volunteers. And I'll meet you back here in another time for another construction math lesson.